Hi everyone, I'm Sandra and today on MapMaga we are covering the first part of the Inequalities Crash Course. Some basic properties of inequalities to take note of. What happens if you multiply or divide both sides by a positive number and negative number respectively? Let's say you multiply both sides by 2, which is equivalent to dividing both sides by half. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. You know that 4 is greater than 2. So from this example, you can see that multiplying both sides of an inequality by a positive number, the sign remains the same. There is no sign change. Similarly, if I multiply both sides of this inequality by x plus 1 squared, which is equivalent to dividing both sides by 1 over x plus 1 squared, I'll have x minus 2 times x plus 1 squared on the left hand side and 2 times x plus 1 on the right hand side. And the sign remains the same because square numbers are positive. No matter what value x takes on, x plus 1 squared is still positive, so you can do this. If you're sharp, then you'll say, what about the case where x equals negative 1, which will make x plus 1 squared equal to 0? 0 is not a positive number, it has no sign. Well, in this case, it doesn't matter because in order for this expression to be defined, the denominator cannot be 0, so x cannot be negative 1, so you don't need to worry about this here. On the other hand, what happens when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number? Say you multiply this inequality on both sides by negative 1 which is equivalent to dividing both sides by negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And you know that negative 2 is smaller than negative 1. So as you can see, when both sides are multiplied or divided by a negative number, the sign is reversed. Initially it was greater than, now it's smaller. The same logic applies anytime you want to multiply or divide these unknowns by a negative number. Then what if you want to multiply or divide both sides by an unknown which isn't strictly positive or negative? Suppose I want to multiply both sides of this by x plus 1, which is equivalent to dividing both sides by 1 over x plus 1. So the left hand side will be x minus 2 times x plus 1, and the right, for the right hand side, 2 over x plus 1 times x plus 1 is 2. Then what's the sign here? Well, you actually can't do this. It's wrong. Because for certain values of x, x plus 1 will be positive. But for other values of x, x plus 1 would be negative. So you can't do this. You can only multiply or divide inequality by something if you know whether it is strictly positive or strictly negative. Now that we have covered the basic properties of inequalities, we can move on to discuss how to solve different types of inequalities. I would classify the questions into three categories. The first is inequalities involving polynomials or fractions that contain polynomials like this. And the second category is inequalities involving modulus functions like this. And the third and last category is the deduced questions which allows you to solve ugly expressions like this or this. I will cover the first type in this video and the next two in the next video. Regardless of which category you are looking at, the first step is to note down any restrictions to the solution. Some types of functions including fractions, lawn functions and square root functions have restrictions on the solutions. For fractions, the denominator cannot be zero or else the expression will be undefined. So for this question, x is, cannot be equal to negative 1, or else x plus 1 will be equal to 0. Meanwhile, for ln functions, ln x is defined only when x is greater than 0. In addition to that, the denominator here cannot be 0, so ln x is not equal to negative 1, i.e. x is not equal to 1 over e in order for 2 over ln x plus 1 to be defined. For square roots, the thing inside the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0 in order for the function to be defined. So if you have a root x, then immediately x has to be greater than or equal to 0 for root x to be defined. 
Here too, you have to make a mental note that the denominator cannot be zero. But for this particular expression, you don't need to worry about it because the square root of x can never be equal to negative one. And so the square root of x plus one will never be zero. It's a good practice to write down all these restrictions in the first step of your working because as you proceed to solve the question, you might forget about it later on. Let's go back to the question categories, starting with the first one. With fractions, as I already said, you start by noting down the value of x, which will make the denominator equal to 0. So there's a restriction and solution here that x cannot be equal to negative 1. Then, the second step is to multiply both sides by the square of the denominator. As I already demonstrated earlier, you get x minus 2 times x plus 1 squared greater than or equal to 2 times x plus 1. This is a polynomial function. This is also a polynomial function. If you get an expression like this right from the start, not in a fraction, you can just start following the steps from here. Your next step is to bring all the terms to one side if necessary. So, you have the left hand side minus the right hand side is greater than or equal to 0. And you want to get 0 on one side because then all you need to do is find the values of x for which this expression is positive or negative. And to do that, your next step is to find the roots. By that I mean, what are the values of x that will make this expression equal to 0? If you can, factorize the expression. Here, take out the common factor x plus 1, then you will have x minus 2 times x plus 1 minus 2. Expand it, so x squared min minus 2x plus x is minus x, and minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4. If it was possible, you would then try to factorize this, but clearly in this case you can't. So if the question allows you to use a calculator, you can use a GC to find the roots. But a lot of inequalities questions will say, solve without using a calculator. In which case, you have to use the quadratic formula. For an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, the roots can be found using the equation x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Applying this here, when x squared minus x minus 4 equals 0, x equals to negative b, which is 1, plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I won't go through too much of how to use this formula because you ought to know it already or else you can find other tutorial videos online. And that means x equals to half plus root 17 over 2 or x equals to half minus root 17 over 2. Then if you want to, you can write the expression in factorized form with all the roots. So x plus 1 times x minus 1 root times x minus another root. Now let's sidetrack a bit. What if you have a quadratic factor with no roots? Let's say you have an expression like this. The quadratic factor x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to x plus 1 squared plus 3 if you complete the square. And this is greater than or equal to 3, which is strictly greater than 0 because x plus 1 squared is greater than or equal to 0 for all real values of x. And if you're not familiar with this notation, the three dots in this orientation means because, the upside down a means for all, and this notation here means that x is an element of the set of all real numbers. What this tells you is that x squared plus 2x plus 4 is always positive which means that you can divide both sides by x squared plus 2x plus 4 to get rid of it. And the expression just becomes x plus 1 times x minus 1 is smaller than 0, and you can continue from here. So, back on track. After you find the roots, you can actually solve the inequality already. So, let's move this up for more space. You draw a number line indicating the roots in the correct ascending order from left to right. Numbers that are furthest to the right will be positive, followed by negative, and it just alternates between negative and positive all the way. 
What this actually means is that if x takes on values in this region or this region, then the entire expression will be positive, whereas if x takes on values in this region or this region, the entire expression will be negative. No matter how many roots you have, as long as the coefficients of the highest power of x is positive, like if it's a cubic function, you need to have the coefficient of x cubed be positive. If it's a quartic function, you need the coefficient of x to the power of 4 to be positive and so on. As long as that condition is fulfilled, you can start with a plus on the rightmost side and just alternate all the way. Because if x is greater than all the roots here, it means that every factor is positive. So the entire expression is positive. But then if you move to the left, x is now smaller than one of the roots. So one of these factors is now negative, but the rest are still positive. So overall, the entire expression is negative. And if you move left again, x is now smaller than two of the roots. So two of the factors are negative and the rest are positive. And you know, two negatives make a positive, so overall it's positive. And so on and so forth. If you don't understand what I just said, just remember, make sure the coefficient of the highest power of x is positive. Then you start with a plus sign on the right and alternate towards the left. For this inequality, you want the values of x that will make the function greater than or equal to 0. So that's this part or this part. So is this a solution to the question? A lot of people might make the careless mistake of stopping here, but actually, you're not done yet. Before you declare this to be your final answer, go back to your first step, where you identified restrictions to the solution set. And since x cannot be negative 1, this sign is wrong because it includes negative 1 in the solution. So since x cannot be equal to negative 1, therefore, x is no longer smaller than or equal to negative 1. It is strictly smaller than negative 1. And the other side is not affected, so here it remains the same. Sometimes you can then leave the answer like that. But other times, the question will ask you to find the solution set, in which case, you have to express the answer in interval notation or set builder notation. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to demonstrate interval notation because it's easier. The solution set is this, which means that you take all the real numbers from here to here. Square bracket means it's inclusive of the number on the left, and this round bracket means that it is not inclusive of negative 1. And you can also take on any values from half plus root 17 over 2 to infinity. And here again is a square bracket because it's inclusive. And anytime you have infinity, you use a round bracket. This curvy thing in the middle is the union sign, which means that x belongs in either this or this or both. Like it can be in either or both. So in this video, we have covered some basic properties of inequalities as well as inequalities involving polynomial functions or fractions that contain polynomial functions. Look out for the next video next week for how to solve inequalities that contain modulus functions and those deduce questions. All the best for your school exams or A-levels or just life in general. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments.